Hello, my name is Selena and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing my May wrap up. I'm finally on time-ish for a wrap up because it is only June 4th when I am filming this and the lighting is a little weird but that's okay. Let's look at my stats right here. So I read nine things this month. My average rating was really high this month. It was a really great reading month. And that is 4.44 stars. So to get that rating, I read one 3.75 star, two 4 star, three 4.5 star, one 4.75 star, and two 5 stars. So lots of books that I really, really loved this month. In terms of genre, I read mostly fantasy and one horror book. Being real, that horror was very fantastical horror as well. Light horror, but I'm still counting it as horror. As for age ranges, I read one middle grade, I believe three YA books, and then the rest, five were adult books. And then as for mediums, I believe five of the books that I read were through audio. So this, this month, which is different from other months, I have leaned heavily on audiobooks. Then I read um, like two print books and two digital books. So two books that were like in hard copy and two that were ebooks. So without further ado, let's just get into the book. I go from my least favorite to my most favorite. And so my least favorite of the month was the 3.5 star, 7.5 star, and that was The Wolf and the Woodsman by Ava Reed. So this was the closest thing to a disappointment that I had this month. And I could lower this to like 3.5 maybe, but I don't know. I think it was just a four star that was like not quite there. Like it was a lower four star. Like I didn't love it. I enjoyed parts of it. I honestly just had a really mixed experience of this book. So I thought the beginning third or something or half even, I loved. I thought this book was great. So I was getting sort of the cold, bear in the nightingale, spinning silver type of vibes. And then about halfway through, we get into the city and there's some stuff that goes down and it wasn't really for me. Um, in case you want to, you don't know the pitch for this book, we have a main character whose name is Eva K. Eva K. Eva K. I couldn't remember how the audiobook narrator says it, but the audiobook narrator, narrator says Eva K. And so Eva K. is our main character who is a part of really two oppressed classes in this um, empire, basically. And the people from the empire come every year to get one woman from their village who has magic and they take her back to the capital to do who knows what with her. And our main character doesn't have magic, but she's kind of an outcast in her village. And so they send her instead of someone with actual magic. And it's rough. <laughs> so she basically finds herself like on this journey to the capital with people who hate her, woodsmen who hate her, and it kind of has this sort of Matthias Nina-esque journey with it. Um, it's almost like if you had the Nina and Matthias journey that you don't see, but you get sort of flashbacks to in Six of Crows and you age them up a bit and change their personality slightly. Like um, Matthias would be way less intense and Nina would be less like likable <laughs> and like fun loving. Um, then you would get this book almost and it this book's a lot more like methodical and deeper writing than Six of Crows but the dynamic did remind me of that and I just find so so maybe at one point I would have liked this book a lot better but I I did struggle a bit with the dynamic I thought that it was really good in the first half but then the dynamic between this this hunter and this um this this woodsman and our main character it was a little bit like hard to tell what the feelings and the bond was at times like I was like is this attraction is this like something deeper why are y'all acting like this like it was very hard to deal with and then it wasn't well established when we changed settings like what was going on with them so that was probably a main complaint I had with them and then also the plot this is much more a character driven book I really I did like Eva K our character um, and I did like the Woodsman character, um, and I hated almost everybody else because you're supposed to hate almost everybody else. And I liked how we get a little bit in the, well, in the second half, Eve K learning about her heritage, um, which is like basically fantasy Jewish. And that was really interesting. But what was going on in the capital, like the politics of it was just so uninteresting to me and so confusing to me. And I was just like, what are we doing? 
And then there was also Grisha vibes of like magical object animal type thing. But I honestly, I don't, I'm not accusing this book of copying Grisha. Like these are things that are could come from folklore, like Eastern European folklore, and that's what this book pulls from. So the folklore elements were really strong, and the dynamic um, between this um, like Jewish and pagan girl and this who's who's very much like a Christian Nazi type thing. Um, it, it's it was interesting, and it wasn't quite as like Nazi romance. It wasn't like that necessarily. Um, it was a lot like more, it was well done and handled with grace. Like I'm not trying to criticize that at all. This author is Jewish. They knew what they were doing. It was just there were some things about the politics of the world that didn't make sense, like decisions with that. And then I wasn't as invested in this couple as I could should have been for the second half to work. And then the ending, the other thing, the ending also upset me a little bit because I was like, well, what were we here for then? What were we here for? And so I don't know that I had mixed feelings. I had a really great experience with parts of this book and I was so into it for parts of this book. And then there were things that just did not work for me later. So that's a big issue with this book for me. And the next two, I kind of don't know which order to put them in because one of them is part of a series and I like the series better as a whole than this book. But I think I know. I, yeah, I think it's going to be I'm going to go with this series. So I read The Disappearance of Winter's Daughter by Michael J. Sullivan. This is my first four star of the month. So this one was really good. Um, I really enjoyed this one a little bit more than the previous two in this series. This is the Ryeria Chronicle. So this is like the the duo of Hadrian Royce Ryeria that we see in Re Revelations. We see them and uh, their first several years together as partners in crime or I don't know mercenary work partners in mercenary work for uh the the, the series and so we are on year four of them being being together like being partners and I don't love so I love their dynamic and I also am like it's been four years shouldn't we be a little bit farther down in the friendship train I don't know that was probably my biggest complaint with it but I thought the plot was a lot more interesting in this one. I love Royce and Hadrian always. And Royce especially has just shined in the series. This book, he was so funny. I wish, my other complaint is the first book had so much of Gwen and I loved it. And I wish we had more Gwen. But every book has had less and less Gwen. So there wasn't a lot of Gwen in this. But I wish there was more. And Royce and Hadrian were great in it. And the plot was really good. They were basically hired to go... Um, honestly, they were either, they were hired to go find this nobleman's daughter who was married to this duke in this land and has recently gone missing, or if they cannot find her and it turns out she is dead, to massacre the place, or at least Royce is hired to do that. Hadrian's like, no, 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 we're gonna look for her. And they do, and, um, it's really good. I really liked the plot. There were lots of twists and turns. We get a little bit more insight into the world so the last book also gave us more insight into the world the magic part of the world this just gets more us more insight into the like social stratosphere of the world we get a little bit more of the social statuses so elves are are probably the bottom of the social ladder at this point like they are like the worst treated and we see them in a city where you're tr they're treated very very badly and you see like kind of rebellion stirring and yeah you see that and I, I really liked it. I liked Royce and Hadrian and I liked some of the other characters that were um like part of this cast so what's her name? Jenny. I liked Jenny a lot and I liked ugh, the old woman that <laughs> that Royce is like afraid of Evelyn Hemsworth, I think. Yeah, Evelyn Hemsworth. <laughs> I really liked her. I really, so I really liked this one. It was very good. It's probably my second favorite of Rayuria Revelation, of the Rayuria Chronicles series, after The Crown Tower. That was still the best one, in my opinion. My next four star was White Trash Warlock by David R. Slayton. So this is a really great um, queer uh, urban fantasy book. We follow a man named Adam Binder, Binder who has the sight. He's like, I don't know, like a witch or a wizard or something. And so he sees the world beyond this one of spirits and elves and like all the crazy creatures. And he's always been shunned for this. And he's also been shunned for the fact that he's gay. So his mother and his brother come from, they all come from, the, he comes from this very like conservative white um southern family and they don't really know what to do with him but 
they have not traditionally handled him very well. Adam was put into a like mental institution for a while, like, and it was very not good there. He was not treated very well. And he's kind he's somewhat estranged from his family. He talks to his mom a little bit, but he's very estranged from his brother until his brother sends him a text and is like, I need your help. My wife is possessed by a demon. And so Adam goes to help him and they try, they're trying to um, just help his wife, help his brother's wife. And Adam has this very problematic family dynamic that I thought was very interesting to read about. And clearly like there's love there, but there's also a lot of trauma and a lot of history and a lot of secrets and a lot of bad feelings and like hard feelings there. And that was really interesting to read about. So I really loved this book though. There's also a romance with this like cop <laughs> figure. And I have issues with that, but I had some issues with the romance, but overall it was okay. Um, I did like Vic and I liked our plot. I thought it was fun enough, so four stars. Then I have a 4.5 star read that I was similarly mixed on, but it's still 4.5 stars because of how much of this I enjoyed. There are just some glaring things that are a little bit hard for me to deal with, but that is Wildwood Dancing by Juliette Marillier. I read this, I read this over several months because it's very slow and I've been very busy and so I haven't had the time to prioritize it and I've also been reading this with other slow books like Robin Hobbs so things just got pushed by the wayside a lot of times reading did like especially and so this one I'm very glad I was able to finish it up. I think maybe my enjoyment would have been I don't know if it would have been any better if I hadn't read it slowly um I but I still really really enjoyed it like for most of this book it was so so well written and amazing and it was always well written I'm not saying that but this is basically a 12 dancing princesses retelling taking place in I don't even know like historical Rom Romania I think and we basically follow this family of girls five sisters instead of 12 who can travel across the border into this fey realm and they have like they, they dance there and um, things in both in the magical world and the mortal world begin to become a little bit more dangerous for them. And that's kind of where we see them. We, I would, I've described this in my reading vlog as like a YA version of The Bear and the Nightingale. And so I think if you like The Bear and the Nightingale and you wouldn't mind it being a little bit more YA, I think you should definitely give this one a try. It has similar folklore. It has more fairy tale esque vibes and it's a bit younger. So our main character is younger. There's a, a younger sort of romance and there's younger explorations of similar themes of Bear and the Nightingale, but I still really, really liked it. There's lots of themes of women and history. It's very historical. It's very slow. It's very atmospheric. It's very beautiful. It's very precious. Um, it ha almost has like the preciousness <laughs> of Spinning Silver with some more of the, the vibes of Bear and the Nightingale. And I really, so I really liked it. It just, there was a couple things towards the end that I was like, what? are we doing and that's all I want to say about that but there were some things that was just a little bit confusing to me and I still love the book but it, it my experience was a bit more mixed than I originally thought it was going to be my next 4.5 star was one of the books I read on ebook I got it from my library because I did not want to read the whole or buy the whole anthology because it is in an anthology I only cared about this book or this little novella and that is The Lightning Tree by Patrick Rothfuss I read the Kingkiller Chronicles last year in the fall and I absolutely loved it and I figured I then I read Slow Regard of Silent Things this winter and oh it was rough <laughs> I did not like that very much at all but then so I was nervous about the lightning tree but then I just realized that my library had rogues the anthology that it's in and I was like I need to read it so I picked it up and I checked it out and it was absolutely gorgeous it was very very good it was very slice of life fantasy just like the slow regard of silent things is but honestly the deal with slice of life fantasy to me is if someone's life is not interesting to you the book won't be interesting to you and Ari's life wasn't very interesting to me like her day-to-day -day, and I didn't really understand it very much and then lightning tree I very much found Bass day-to-day -day very interesting because this book is about Bass a day in Bass's life and it was very interesting it was just a real return to the Kingkiller world and it just felt good to be there. So I really, really enjoyed this one. I gave it 4.5 stars. And then my final 4.5 star and my favorite 4.5 star of the month. 
a carne by Lynette Noni. So I could raise this and I might, but we will see. Either way, it's like 4.5, 4.75 star. And I absolutely love it. It's my, it's the beginning of one of my new favorite YA fantasy series. When I started it, I wasn't sure about it. And then I was obsessed. I was so obsessed. I loved it so much. Um, it was just so, so good. Um, this is really just a very classic-y YA portal fantasy, a little bit cheesy, um, with a girl named Alex who comes from our world and just stumbles into this magical world and is enrolled in a magical school. And then there's kind of a figure, like a darker figure in the world who kind of wants her for his own games for some reason. And she has like these really awesome friends at the school though, but things aren't entirely safe. You know the vibe, you know the vibe. And it's just really, really good. This is such a cozy, wonderful like portal fantasy to read um magical school fantasy to read um I, I loved it I thought Alex was a good character I liked the the friendships and I liked the dynamics and I like Alex's I, I especially like Alex in the second book which I've also just read but I still liked her in this and this is just a great start to a series I'm very much looking forward to and honestly like I liked it so much more than I thought I did when I first finished it I was like whoa that was so good but do I do I want to give it higher than a four star? I did because it's so, so, so worth it and so much, so, so good. It's one of my favorite things I read this month. And the fact that we're only halfway through the wrap up should tell you how many great things I read this month. Then the 4.75 star of the month was Gallant by V.E. Schwab. So this is actually the Illumicrate cover on a non-Illumicrate book because I wanted my Illumicrate cover, um, I wanted my Illumicrate, the, the regular cover on the Illuminate, Illumicrate book because like, doesn't that just look so like matchy and good? And then like that part like looks so good. And then this is very matchy to this one. Like it's just so good, right? I love it. Either way, Gallant is a wonderful, wonderful book. I absolutely loved it. I thought it was so, so good. My my favorite thing that V. Schwab has ever written. It's um, YA-ish. It's very like not necessarily putting an age range on it, but I feel like it is definitely more of a YA take on gothic fantasy and it is so good in my opinion because I love gothic tropes and this used them so well. I mean, we have the gothic house. We have the creepy other worlds. We have the creepy like ghouls that, that our main character sees. I loved it. I really liked our main character, Olivia, who she doesn't speak. So it's very interesting to read from her point of view. There were things about the plot and the, the reveals that I was like, ah, oh, really? And that didn't fully, they just didn't fully get me. But I still really liked uh, Gallant and that's probably why it's a 4.75 star and also because it's very plot driven to me so it was it it's not going to be a favorite like something that's more character driven would be which is why I'm tempted to raise a carne because it really is the characters for me that make that but anyways I absolutely loved Gallant I highly recommend it I've seen people not liking this book that are Schwab fans. I'm someone who likes Schwab's book that are more simple and just kind of go with the idea. And I think she, that's when she executes her ideas at their best, when she's not trying to do like too many things. Or um, these were just, this was just a really execute, well executed idea to me. And I really liked it despite what other people have been saying about it. Now we are into my five stars. So the first five star I read is What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher. I read an arc of this. This comes out in July. I've been recommending it all over the place, even though it doesn't come out until July. Um, I love this book. This is just such a stunning, stunning horror novella. It follows um, like the, the plot structure. It's the House of the Fall of House of Usher by Poe and it's like a retelling. We have a non-binary main character. We, uh, Tin Kingfisher uses her like classic quirky writing to make this just wonderfully written. The There's like body and like plant horror that I think is just so gross and beautifully written. And then we have um, just a really like thrilling fun plot, really good atmosphere. I love atmospheric horror vibes. It's my favorite vibe of horror. Um, so closely followed by small, small town vibes. And then we have a non-binary main character. This book was just so stinking. God, ugh, oh, I loved it so much. I highly recommend you check it out if you've liked T. Kingfisher in the past, if you like light atmospheric horror, 
or if you are a fan of gothic and or plants. And then finally, my favorite book of the month. This was hard, but it is, I think, my favorite book of the month, and that is Exile by Shannon Messenger. This is the second book in the Keeper of the Lost City series. I absolutely loved Exile. Exile really turned up the heat for the series, so it was still very sweet and cute, um, like Keeper of the Lost Cities was, but it really just made, so it put Sophie through so much, and it just gave me so much appreciation for Sophie, and who she is as a character and how strong she is and how amazing and brilliant she is. And then the character, it was, this was like, this is a big book and we don't call, cover too much like plot ground, but it, it, it it's so thrilling to me. And it's like, there is conflict driving this book. And it was just so compelling to me to read about. Um, we got to see more of characters who I absolutely loved like Keith. And I hope we keep seeing as much of him in that book as we do. And the relationship Sophie just has with her parental figures and like her familial figures is so beautiful. Um, like Alden, um, and then her two parents, I can't remember their names right now, Grady and Edeline, yeah, that's their names. Just they continue to be sweet, they continue to be cute, and we see Sophie have actual like trauma and like hurt and things from the last book and it just it really it was it was really well done and then we also see um some some more mysteries we get some answers we get some some more questions it's just it does exactly what a second book in a series like this should do it honestly feels a lot more grown up than most of the middle grade that's being published today i think it's one of those series that's going to age with its characters i highly 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 recommend the keeper of the lost city series so far i'm loving it so much all right, thank you for watching this video. These are some of the books that I read in, these are some of the books that I read in the month of May. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.